I'm going to start off. Jaydeep Subedar. Uh, I run product management for uh, application platforms group, part of which is called uh, Cisco Integration Platform. That will enable the stuff that I'm going to talk about. Uh, and this is a very basic generic talk where you will learn how to manage your APIs, what it means to manage your APIs, uh, what's the benefits of it and what it can result in. So you'll see some of that during this presentation. Okay? So let me start with a question. How many people in their organizations have APIs? Okay. And how many more groups within your organization are starting to build more APIs? A few of them? Yeah? Are those APIs being managed in any form across your organization? Not yet. That's what I guessed, and that's what I've heard very consistently from organizations that are you know, 50 people all the way up to 5,000 or even 50,000 person organizations. Few of them have done it well, uh, and they've, they've reaped the benefits of it. So here, I asked you the questions. You gave me exactly these answers. I predicted it. See? I can be like, I know exactly what it is. <laughs> Uh, so effectively, managing your APIs can have significant benefits uh, to your organization. And that's what this talk is about. Okay? So with, with the rise of social mobile analytics and cloud, there's a lot of opportunity that's building up uh, in the space. There's a lot of things that are happening uh, as we speak. And the world is moving fast. Now, if you, if you look at how organizations have evolved and how they've uh, benefited from it, like if you look at the stats, here's just a couple of them. Uh, $2 billion in Expedia revenue last year was through APIs. In APIs alone, it wasn't uh, anything else but driven through the API ecosystem. Half of Salesforce.com, the revenue is through APIs. So you can imagine such organizations have made significant progress in the way they build their APIs and expose them very, very effectively. And that's what all of us need to do. And here's, here's the reason why companies want to uh, expose their APIs, some of the reasons. I mean, there's many more. But mostly, it's, it's, it's growth in new markets, which enables you know, new businesses to happen, new ways of doing business. Uh, this allows for innovation to happen with your, either your whole product portfolio or your portfolio along with other partner ecosystems that are coming up. Uh, there is super fast development because of uh, the mobility uh, aspect of things. There's analytics overlaid on top of it, so everyone wants to analyze their data, wants to see usage, wants to see what, uh, how their consumers are using their APIs. And uh, that creates opportunity for all of us. Right? And of course, we all know about the IoT, IOE initiatives that every single company is making at this point and betting on it. It's a big, it's a big bet for every single company. Now, any guesses on how much it costs in terms of a project cost, in terms of percentage, uh, to build an API based on a backend system that you already have in place? What's the percentage of cost, raise of hands, uh, that's allocated to actually just exposing your API? Any guesses? 20%? Think, Mark? 40%? Here. There was a Gartner study, and Gartner says 70% of the cost involved in making an API available to the world is in the integration with the backend systems. So we've been doing something wrong somewhere. And based on this learning, and also Cisco's internal thought processes and what we've been doing, we've thought through a way to do lifecycle management of APIs in a way which will reduce that cost significantly. There will be some cost involved and some mind shifts involved in, in building your APIs differently but we're, we have a system that should work. Here's the full life cycle of the API. So we start with define the API, which is not necessarily define it within your backend systems, but just 
tell the world, hey, this is how my API is going to be. You don't have to really develop it. You just have to document it. Beyond that, you, start, you get feedback, and you start developing based on what, what feedback you've gotten. So your, the development that you put in is very relevant to your application developer. And then it's automatic that you haven't taken a whole lot of you know, back and forth, and you've saved a lot of time and money doing that portion effectively. Then you can publish your APIs, which is you know, the real thing being exposed to the world. Uh, you have to, of course, support them in, in a manner that's, that's relevant. And I'll, I'll go into a little bit of detail in the next couple of slides. And then you retire them, and you do that gracefully. You need to plan for retiring APIs where you can't, you can't leave your applications uh, out dry. You know, they don't know how to, how to interact with your system at some point in time. You need to manage that very cleanly. By the way, I should have announced this before I started. For any questions that you ask, there is a scarf that's given away. So if you have questions, please feel free to interrupt me, and Laura will come by with the scarf. <laughs> All right? And please, let's ask some questions. Raise your hand. Let me know. Uh, so here, this is the life cycle of the API. Define, develop, publish, support, and retire. And there's three aspects to consider, business, technical, and operational. Now, when I said define the API, I was talking about creating a framework for your application developers to, to just see and understand. You, you really just made a concept of what you want to develop, and you've shared that with the app developers. And there, in the business frame, you get, you're getting early feedback. And that's, that's wonderful to have. No? Uh, in the technology of it, there is customer-centric design, and you're making sure that you're doing the right stuff, making the right calls into your back-end system, providing the right amount of information, the right amount of uh, abstractions that you need to do within the system on the technical front. And of course, operationally, you want to standardize this across your full portfolio of APIs. You can't be thinking of one API being, being one kind and another API being completely different, and they don't talk with each other. They're not consistent for your developers, because if you think about it, you want your developers to use all the APIs that your organization creates. And for that to happen, you can't make it difficult by having different standards all over the place. You have to make it consistent and something that they, they can understand intuitively. So that's where there's, you know, within, within the define phase, there's a few different benefits that we can provide. Within develop, uh, we have a system where we can rapidly prototype things. And, you know, expose it to the world, get feedback again. And this loop can be very fast in terms of uh, develop to expose. And we've al also created tool chains where if you use, for example, a JAX-RS framework or a Spring framework, straight from the framework that you're bu building your backend systems, that generates the APIs for you which are web-enabled already. You don't need to do anything except add in a package and then build your system. And you have this full, full portfolio of APIs. And that makes it also consistent across all your development life cycles. As long as you're using the same development tools across your organization, it can be made very easy to, to deploy these APIs. And, and then there is publish, support, and retire. Within publish, there is you know, access control, who gets access to what APIs at what time, uh, uh, what's the kind of rate limits that you want to provide where, you know, Say a gold level of service might have 1,000 transactions per second. A silver might have 500. And you want to be able to make sure that you do provide that, you know, that abstraction layer that, that proxies for you, as well as controls your backend resources. Because you don't want to overwhelm your backend resources because some developer messed up on the app. You can't let a bad app bring down your whole API system. So you have to abstract that out. and, and no, in some ways, QoS control it and policy control it. The, the, the platform, the Cisco integration platform, allows for that. And then, of course, there is the support and retire, which is around you know, doing uh, things like social media plugins and you know, allowing for comments and feedback on your APIs. In the retire phase, we have features coming up that will allow for, uh, for example, uh, rate limiting your API. So say, say your API originally supported 1,000 transactions per second for a gold kind of customer. 
you inform them through the system saying, hey, in six months, it's going to go down to 500 only because you have this new version of API that you need to move to. And then you keep monitoring on your dashboard saying, OK, is customer of type gold using 500 or 1,000? And what, what, what level are they using? And at some point, you can say, OK, now turn the knob and say, OK, I'm going to just reduce it to 500. And that's all they'll get. And they can move on to the new version where they will continue to get a, a full 1,000 if you like. So you can, you can transition them gracefully. You can monitor the analytics behind your system and figure out whether anyone's using it. You can communicate with them on the forum or through a backend system to allow for a very clean migration from your old APIs to your new ones. And you need to think about all of this stuff when you're managing a full API ecosystem. So it's important that you think through that piece. So this slide kind of covers, in this, in this full life cycle, what's supported today. So if you, if you look at the define phase, there is something called RAML, which is REST-based API markup language. It's an extension of REST in some ways. It allows for easier documentation of APIs, consistent documentation of APIs. It gives you kind of a, a dictionary for the API, as, as Paul would put it, uh, which allows for one way to document your APIs and all the methods within it. The dictionary is not really enough, so I'll get to the next piece very shortly. This portal creation, which is the platform itself can, can be the portal for your developers to come in and look at your APIs. You don't need to document it in PDF or in Word or in some other HTML system. This, this platform allows you to do that. Then there is, in the develop phase, there's something called mocking service, where you haven't really developed the integration into your backend systems, whatever database or products that you might have. It's just a mocking system where, right from this platform, you're responding to API requests from the application and responding with, with sample outputs. So you don't really need to create the full system and the integration. You can just try out the API. There's something called notebook service which is teaching you the grammar of the API in some ways, composing the API system, where you tell your, uh, your application developer, here are some flows uh, that can work, where you say, step number one, go get my credentials certified. Step number two, go access the CRM database and find some information. Step number three, do this. Step number four, do this. You're giving them a full example, one by one, step by step, saying these are, these are going to be your, your requests, and this is how the responses will be. When they see that, they know exactly how to use your API. Instead of just having a dictionary, now they know the grammar and they know how to integrate. Now this, I'm sorry? Would that, uh, the notebook service, would that include the licenses that were associated with those APIs could, and the keys? Could, yes, you could, you could integrate it so that, or you can just program it very simply so that it, it checks for license or does not check for license. It's up to you as the API owner to have that step in between. A, a way of attributing within that notebook service of who has what levels and what license keys are associated yes. with Yes, so you could, you could authenticate and authorize based on the first step, which is give me, my, give me your username and password. Based on that, you can say, OK, because your username and password is such and such, you have access to this service, and you can do so many transactions. You can do such things. OK, thanks. So, and beyond that, you can actually, oh, thank you. You get a scarf. <laughs> thank you, Laura. Uh, beyond that, you can actually integrate across systems. So it doesn't have to be a single API. A notebook can include any number of APIs that you like including stuff that you do not manage. So for example, you log in, and after the login, you check for license level, like you said. Then you say, OK, what's your Facebook username? And you put in your Facebook username. You can go reach out to Facebook, get his or her profile information, and say, OK, you are a male or a female. And based on that, the next step will be affected. So you can do such things very easily. It's, it's, it takes five minutes to create a notebook, really. So it's all visual interface, very easy to use. Uh, so that's where the notebook can, uh, comes in. With Publish, this becomes the platform to use for all your APIs. In fact, Cisco is moving to this platform as well. Very soon you'll see uh, developer.cisco.com powered by this platform in the back end. 
where all of Cisco's APIs will be, be, will be deployed only through developer.cisco.com, whether it be product APIs, sandbox APIs, services, or commerce. All of that for Cisco will be on this platform, and the front end would be developer.cisco.com. Uh, you can have portal capabilities for API. Every, every API, if you wanted to document it a certain way, you can, you can do that. And as, as an organization, you can say, these five tabs are absolutely necessary to document. What's the purpose of this API? What are the FAQs? Who has access to it? Uh, what's the grammar? And what's the notations? And you can say, as an organization, all of my APIs must follow this convention. So you can, you can enforce such logic behind the scenes. In support, there is uh, you know, forums and feedback, and we all get what that is. What this allows is, on a per API basis, you can actually go and get feedback from the users of this API. There is, there is back and forth interaction instead of somebody having to email some administrator that they, they do not even know of and hope to get a response. Here, there is a community that can support it. And then, as a result, you get full lifecycle management uh, on this platform. Does this seem exciting? Yes. Is there any concept of like importing or exporting APIs into this system, or is that something that's yes, coming later? Yes, there is. So you can import APIs uh, from either other services or from within the platform, and you can export it to any REST-based service if you like. It's, it's, it's easy. It's just button clicks. Very easy. Okay. Thanks. Right? So that brings us to the benefits of API management. You know, I think I'm preaching to the choir in some ways, but you get it con you know, with consistency, exposure, and standardization and documentation. These are the, the high-level benefits of you, what you get with a platform. I think all of you understand this. Now you need to act on getting it done for your organization. Right? There's, there's a lot of benefits. And we make it you know, simple, smart, and secure. The system itself is secure. Uh, so now I'm going to, in the next section, in the next one slide, really, give you an action plan for what you need to do. Okay? And I'm serious about this. You've got to implement this for your organization. Make it happen. This week, ask us for a demo of what we're doing. I can walk you through any of those aspects of the API. Vasant on, at the back of the room can walk you through it as well. Uh, most of the DevNet folks know about it, so they can possibly walk you through it. Ask me for a demo. I can, I can show you how the system works and any aspect of it, business, technical, or operational, in any of the stages. And I can explain it in much more detail. As soon as you get back, check out this URL. Remember this, cisco.com slash go slash application platforms. It's very simple. This, this application platforms includes this product as well as others which are related to this. That's the group I work in. And within this year, think through and develop your API ecosystem and expand your business. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity here. And most of us are just about scratching the surface. There's a lot to do. It's easy enough uh, if you think through it. And it's possible. And that, that gives you benefits. You know? There is significant benefits you can get, competitive advantages you can get, and uh, improve your systems. And that's all I really had. Any questions? Yes, more. Hi, um, on that platform, are there any pre-built APIs? And if there are any, um, are they, can you play around with them to, to customize it towards your needs within the company? Uh, on the platform, we can give you APIs to play around with. There is a ton of connectors. So if you want to connect to Salesforce or any sort of CRM system or any sort of authentication system, whatever systems you're connecting into, there are connectors pre-built on the platform. Uh, there's a ton of sample APIs that you can download and play with it. And that's very much possible. Uh, beyond that, it becomes specific to what your organization needs. And that's where you would use, use the system for your benefits uh, and customize whatever you need to customize. Right. Thank you. Sure. Yes. Just one second. Let's get the mic. Laura, there's a question here. Uh, is there any suggestion about uh, the API format? 
I'm sorry, I didn't catch the question. Suggestion about? About the API format. API formats, yes. So uh, it's web APIs. It's all REST. And as long as it's REST, yes. you can RAMLize it. RESTful yeah. API. Yes, RESTful APIs. And there is conversion services. So we have built some connectors which allow you to convert from SOAP to REST or other APIs. We are working on Wizzle to REST kind of things. So I, I can walk you through it offline if you like. But it's all REST. It's really web APIs. I, I, I want to ask the, uh, the suggestion about the, your uh, RESTful APIs uh, format, about uh, how many uh, slides is uh, 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 a good way. We, we can get into a discussion on that. Sure, I can uh, discuss offline. But basically, any REST API should work in the system. There is guidelines and, and best practices around this. And we have white papers that we published, again, on the same uh, you know, go slash application platforms. And I can send you a pointer if you like. Uh, on what's the best practices for using within your organization and what, what's coming up in standards bodies and stuff like that. So we have that information. Thanks. So you were talking about the life cycle for the, uh, the APIs. Yes. Um, so when it, you retire uh, mm -hmm. an API, so that's another version that will come in place? Correct. Um, how, how, how long does it take traditionally? I mean, is it like very frequently that you, change, that you uh, put a new version? Is it very dependent from which API? So it, it depends on the kind of API. Usually, product APIs uh, don't get killed. They get versioned. And the next version is always backward compatible with the previous one. Okay. Now, when you talk about services or commerce APIs, at least within Cisco, what they've followed is they monitor API usage. And depending on how people are using it, they'll decide if it needs to be changed in any way, versioned in any way. They make it better and version control it. There are benefits to using the new version where you get some services only on the new one and not on the old one. Uh, and those ones are typically, so the product ones, I would say, have a life cycle of about at least three years before they're versioned. The services ones are a little more dynamic, where they're at least about six months or so, minimum, uh, beyond which they develop a newer version, which is backward compatible. So you can, you can go to the new version and still old, run your old apps. So you don't break the app ecosystem. Very, very rarely do you ever kill the real API. You know? You always have it in, the, in a future version in a slightly different format. So it's an evolution, right? Yes, it's an evolution, yes. Sorry. Anyone else? Questions? Yeah, right behind you. Uh, would you use this platform to interconnect a lot of different APIs and provide a, do some business logic on the output of that and provide a Nordbound interface to other applications? Yes, that's what the next talk is about. <laughs> okay, cool. uh, we use it within Cisco exactly like you mentioned, where uh, we're combining multiple southbound APIs into the SDN controller, and the northbound APIs from that have multiple Northbound APIs from multiple SDN controllers, you make business logic beyond it with an enterprise services bus, and you, you create a real app. So that's very much possible with this platform. In fact, that's one of the benefits of using a, a consistent platform across all your APIs, where it becomes very easy to do this for your developers. And Vasan's going to talk about this next in the, in the next lecture, in the next talk. Yep. Great question. <laughs> Anyone else? Questions? All right, that's it then. Thank you. Hope it was useful. <laughs>